Now we will start discussing the excretory structures or excretory organs. Or structures. These are the structures or organs which would help in elimination of nitrogenous waste. So they help in removal of nitrogenous waste. And depending upon which waste is eliminated, their functioning is going to be different. We will take up various structures in various groups, starting from protozoans. So in protozoa, there are two categories of organisms. One which are in fresh water and one which are in oceans or in marine system. So in protozoa, the main nitrogenous waste is ammonia. So ammonia is the main excretory material and as we have seen that it is highly toxic and should be removed immediately. So it is ammonia and it is lost by diffusion. So if you are talking of protozoans, let say amoeba or paramecium. So they eliminate ammonia through their body surface by simple diffusion. And this elimination here the structure which is helping in removal is body surface. So by body surface. So most of the waste is getting eliminated through their body surface and the process is simple diffusion. Now, some organisms, some protozoans which are fresh water, they face a different complication or different problem. If we talk of an amoeba or a paramecium which is in the same system, they are found in fresh water. So when they are in fresh water, the outer medium is hypotonic as compared to the sap or cytoplasmic content which is inside. And because of this simple difference in the concentration, endoosmosis takes place. So water comes in. So this excess of water which is coming in also needs to be eliminated. And that is done by contractile vacuoles which is known as osmoregulation. So this is one important thing which is eliminated that is nitrogenous waste by simple diffusion. The extra water, extra water which enters because of this kind of complication as they are fresh water, this problem is not seen in the organisms which are marine. So extra water is eliminated by contractile vacuum. Now, how does this contractile vacuole work? In case of amoeba, the contractile vacuole has a main vacuole, main central contractile vacuole, and it is connected to many radiating arms. So there are many such tubes which would collect this extra water and would dump this water into the main vacuole. Similarly, here would be these canals. And all these canals would dump that water into the main central vacuole, main central contractile vacuole. Now, from this contractile vacuole, all that extra water will be thrown out through a temporary pore in case of amoeba. So what happens in case of amoeba, that contractile vacuole which has collected all that water is going to come closer to the plasma membrane and through the pore, that water will be thrown out. But in paramecium, there is a permanent pore. So contractile vacuum and it loses water through a temporary pore. This pore, this opening is permanent in case of paramecium. So this is in amoeba. And in paramecium, In paramecium, contractile vacuoles shape is slightly different. There is a central large vacuole and there are many radiating vacuoles like this. Our function is same. They would collect the extra water from surrounding and this water would be dumped into the central vacuole. But 
in case of paramecium the main contractile vacuole or the central contractile vacuole opens out through a permanent opening so this opens through a permanent opening that means they are capable of eliminating the nitrogenous phase that is ammonia and fresh water protozoans who face this kind of problem they have contractile vacuoles to eliminate that extra water because anything which is extra or harmful has to be eliminated so skin or their surface because they are unicellular we just call it the surface helps in removal of this waste by diffusion and contractile vacuoles help in removal of excess of water which is coming in because of this condition so this is seen in case of protozoans the next two categories which we would discuss are poriferous and nidarians or cylindrate so let us talk about those two the second group is of sponges in sponges also the excretory material is ammonia and the cells release this toxic waste into the water there are incoming canals so these cells they pour that ammonia into the water which is going through those incurrent uh, canals and when water flows out of the body that water takes this ammonia away so here each cell is going to release its own ammonia into water so each cell removes it in water so here there is no surface or anything individual cell whatever ammonia is produced is lost sponges are marine and that is why they don't have this problem of hypotonic and hypertonic condition but there are few sponges which are fresh water so in fresh water sponges like a one example we can take is of spongilla in spongilla because it is a fresh water sponge it is also going to face the same problem the outer medium is hypotonic and the water is going to come in so that extra water will get eliminated by contractile vacuum so again the same thing but that would be seen only in fresh water sponges so in fresh water sponges extra water gets eliminated by contractile vacuoles same thing what happens in case of fresh water protozoans like amoeba and paramecium but as we said this would take place only in fresh water sponges the sponges mostly they are marine they don't face this kind of problem so in them it is only ammonia which is formed which has to be eliminated now coming to the third group that is of nidaria cylindrata or hydra in which we include hydra in hydra also the waste material the main nitrogenous waste material is ammonia so these are all ammonotelic organisms that we have talked of as they are aquatic they can afford to lose that ammonia immediately so again ammonia is the substance now if you are able to remember the structure of hydra the body is vas like and it is attached to a substratum and there is a cavity this is this area in which the water is going to come in here there are tentacles and all so the water comes in and from here only the water is going to leak so they have a blind sac body plan which we talk of and all these cells which are found in this lining these cells are going to release that ammonia which they produce so when water comes into the cavity then the ammonia is poured into the uh, me medium or water and the same outgoing water is going to take this ammonia out so every time fresh water comes in ammonia dissolves in it and then the going outgoing water takes that ammonia out here again base material is ammonia it is lost by each cell or the cells of the layer into that water 
So be it sponges or in case of uh, cylindrates, that is hydra-like organisms, elimination is of ammonia. The medium in which they pour it is water so that it can be easily lost. Now in the next segment, we will be talking about the next group that is platyhelminths or flatworms where the excretory structures are slightly specialized. They are inside the body and they are known as flame cells. So we'll take that up in the next segment.